Welcome back to the Shack News Awards 2023. Uh, you know, this is a team effort. So even when one player makes a mistake, someone else has to pick him up. And that's why we're going to talk about co-op next. Cooperative efforts in gaming. We have several nominees for this category. Remnant 2, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, Disney Illusion Island, Baldur's Gate 3, and Payday 3. So we're going to kick it off with Phil Lavoy talking Remnant 2. I love talking Remnant 2. Um, so yeah, one of the things that I've always, and I'm not, you know, I, I, I refuse to throw shade at anybody, but one of the things when I play co-op that has always irked me, just in general, is when I join somebody else's session, and it's kind of pointless to my character or to my progression or to my game. Um, I feel like I'm not accomplishing anything. Maybe I'm not able to keep the gear. Maybe I'm not able to earn the XP. And that's something that I think Remnant 2 gets perfectly right is the way that your character uh, progresses and maintains all of its um, attributes and, and even gains experience and gains loot in someone else's game. So, for example, if I wanted to play through Remnant 2 solo, I could do so, and I could level my character to the clouds. And then David, you know, which I'm sure he will do, says, hey, why don't you come and join my game? And I jump in there. I'm bringing my character with all my character's might. And if David and I do see things differently in the game than in my own experience, or if we have encounters that weren't in my game because of the way that Remnant 2 randomly rolls its worlds, um, anything that I earn in David's game goes to making my character stronger. So while I'm not progressing my own story, I am progressing my own character. And that allows you to build an identity with your character that then can go to any game, any of your friends' games at any point. Um, and that, to me, is one of the greatest things about it. But even further than that, just the ability to mix and match builds with other players. When my buddies and I booted this up, we're discussing who's going to be what, who is going to be like a healer, who's going to be a tank, who's going to be the DPS dealer, and sort of mixing and matching that way and then watching those evolve. Um, so I actually thought that the co-op aspect of Remnant 2 is one of its strongest features, not just because it's an amazing co-op game, but the way that it allows that mixing of keeping your single player progression with that character and bringing it into somebody else's world, furthering that character in their world, and then bringing that even more overpowered character back to your own or your other friends. So for me, that's been a very, very cool aspect of it is just the, uh, the consistency and progression. So Bill and I have planned to get a posse together. I think TJ um, wants to play as well. Anyone can. I haven't gotten a chance to play this with Bill yet, but I did end up getting it uh, for PS5 so that Amy and I could play, and, and we've been enjoying it so far. So I want to jump over to the PC and roll with Bill. Because of everything he said, he's got a very powerful character, and he can help me uh, with the progression <laughs> of my game. How many people can play co-op in Remnant 2? Uh, I believe like it's three? just three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's like the last game too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, you know, it is also on Xbox Game Pass or hidden there. It now, just hit it. So. Just hit it this week. Yeah. And Remnant One is also there. Uh, if you, awesome. you want to get uh, both of them, because that that game's still fun. I feel yeah. like uh, you know, like third person shooters have kind of moved away from co op in a lot of ways, like. I feel like Gears was that the pinnacle of third person co op for a while. And now, like, we, you know, there's like the Nathan Drake games or, you know, the Uncharted games, or there's a lot of single player third person shooters out there. So I like to see what Remnant is doing. And I, I think the thing that you mentioned about being able to jump into someone else's campaign with ease, that's a huge deal in co-op games and not a lot have of your time wasted that's and not have and your save overwritten or not you know yeah. like there's all sorts of weird things that happen in co-op games like that so i, I think was, that's a, yeah uh, sorry i was just my very last note i won't go on too long but i was um sam played it through for a review for us um with you know his his wife and they had very level characters they'd beaten the campaign and then i came in afterwards and i started playing the game on my own there's two examples. One, I was able to bring Sam in for a part that I wasn't that familiar with, and I knew that he had gone through this part, and it was more of like secret uncovering and earning a piece of gear by meeting very specific standards and, and conditions. 
And so he was able to come in and help me with that. But at the same time, I had rolled different encounters in my world than Sam had when he played through. So I would let him know, hey, man, I have this in my world. Do you want to hop in real quick and grab this weapon that you don't have? And he's like, yeah, let me jump in there real quick. And then we'd go through the encounter together. He'd get the weapon, pop right back out, and I'm just on with my campaign. Like, it's a flawless in-and-out system. So That's awesome. I did want to point out that there's also, like, you can play that get entire game solo and go from beginning to end in it, but there are, and there are dungeons where, like, there are secrets that you can only do with co-op. Like, there's actually a labyrinth where you need somebody to stand on a pressure plate and somebody else to run through a, a an opening wall that you otherwise can't get through on your own. And that's just kind of cool that you build a different experience based on if you're going through a dungeon solo or if you have somebody with you to help you with that stuff. And it seems like Remnant 2 mixes the procedural generation with some, like, handcrafted stuff, too. So it's not as, like, I think some games get a bad rep for using procedural generation. But in this case, it's like there are times where the environments feel, like, very handcrafted. Everything is handcrafted. But it's like... This world has a hundred potential pieces. All one hundred are handcrafted, but you're gonna get twenty-five. Mm-hmm. So you don't know which twenty-five you're getting, but everything is intentional. It's just that it increases the replay factor for being able to go back and and play it again and and earn different things and see different things. So. Yeah, and I know Greg, you interviewed the devs about this, and I remember you guys talking about the the level design was something that they spent a lot of time thinking about after Remnant One. Yeah, they had to design it in a way where, like, you know, so everyone didn't know, like, they had still had these secrets involved, so it wasn't entirely 100%, like, tiles, but, like, they wanted to make sure everyone could find the same secrets in, like, certain aspects, and making those work in each level was, like, a challenge. And that just goes back to replay value. Like, this is a game that you're going to be able to play again and again with friends and get different experiences. I, I think have... that's hugely valuable. I haven't gotten that far in it yet, but, like, Bill, in the end game, is it kind of, like, like destiny where like you get three people together and do different dungeons to get different mods for your different classes and experiment with different builds. Is that kind of what it, what it is at the, at the end game of remnant two? I'm going to mess this up because there's, I keep forgetting the actual feature name. Maybe TJ can help me, but there's like a story mode, which is going to be like your randomly rolled story. And it's going to pull in like certain, um, it's going to pull in certain worlds that you have to beat to complete the story. But there's also a mode where you can, like, basically roll any location, and it will randomly roll that location. So, like, let's just say, for argument's sake, like, World 1, I go through that and I beat that. It's now unlocked. TJ, do you remember the name of the feature? It's called Adventure Mode. Adventure Mode, thank you. So, once you go through your story and beat a certain section you can then unlock that section in adventure mode. And you can only have one location at a time unlocked in adventure mode. So let's say you're like, I really want this weapon. My story mode didn't roll the conditions that I need to get that weapon. I go to adventure mode and I hit roll on that and then I can play through. If I get it, great. I can roll it again and again and again and again. So you can always have one adventure mode and one story mode going. Um, So in that sense, Greg, yes. Like, you could continuously just roll the same world until you were to get the, the dungeon that you're looking for or the boss encounter that you're looking for. It's so very, like, it. Diablo 4-esque, where, like, you have, you know, you can re-roll different levels with different modifiers and try to yeah. get different gear. Okay, yeah, that's, that's what I exactly. figured when yeah. I was playing the story. I was like, this, there's got to be an end game to this. Yeah, that basically just allows you to continuously, like, level your character because you can bring the exact same character into every single... Like, you can just keep doing the campaign over again with the same character if you want to, right? Just roll a new campaign and go again, or roll a new world and go again with that same character. So you can collect everything with one character. You just have to, like, continuously go back and replay and and roll different versions. Nice. Anyone else want to chime in their love of Remnant 2 co-op, or should we move on to the next one? On to the next one. Super Mario Bros. Wonder is our next nominee. Uh, I have opined about how great the multiplayer experience is in this game in several categories we've talked about. Uh, but the co-op aspect of it is fantastic. Uh, I think I said, like, this is the first co-op Mario side-scrolling game that won't break up relationships or friendships. Uh, they removed collision detection. 
uh, so that you're not going to jump on your friend's head when you're running through the levels together. Another you thing they did: pick pr- someone up and throw them off a cliff like a jerk. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't do that. Uh, and if you're playing online and you get a friend in there, you can like run all the levels as races, or you can just hang out together in the levels. And if someone knows how to get to a purple coin and you don't, they can show you. There's no voice chat, uh, so you're not gonna have random people cursing at you or anything. It's it's quite a positive experience. But the local co-op. I think is the the highlight of the Mario Wonder co-op experience and it's just materially better than the new Super Mario Bros or even Mario Maker 2 uh which the co-op there's not great either. Uh so it's it, it's more that Nintendo is finally learning some things and they they are making some changes to the Mario formula with Wonder and co-op is definitely one of those things. I my biggest issue with this game is that um, the local co-op is great, but you can't do that. You can't have that experience online. You yeah. know, if if you're playing with another player, you're playing asynchronously. So mm-hmm. it, there's sort of a detachment there. I really wish you could do online co-op the same way you can do local. I was pretty disappointed by that. It, it's not that you can't. You can be in the same levels together. That's that's what online. I'm saying. Like that's not lo- yeah. like if I'm Yoshi and you're any other character, you can't jump on my back. We're Correct. not in the same instance. That's what Correct. I want. But online, everything else you're saying, I agree with. I think it's mm-hmm. great. It's just missing that option, and I think that's kind of a bummer. But we should yeah. add that you're able to do that locally, and that's awesome. We didn't yeah. mention that the the coolness of being able to have one player play as Yoshi and someone else play as a different character and be able to jump on Yoshi's back. That's cool. I just. I just know that when they tried to do something more like that, David, it was horrible in yep. Super Mario Maker 2. So if this is the alternative, I'll take it. But yeah, I agree that if they could recreate the local co-op experience online, then that would be, I think it would win this category, most likely. Nicole and I had a blast like it's fun because like you said the, the toxicity isn't in this game as much as the other ones but like there are times where Nicole will blame me for her death because like you know mm-hmm. I jumped on a block or I made a block saw before she could jump up and she falls and dies sure. so then we play this game of ghost keep away which sounds terrible but it's also it also creates some really funny memories of playing the game <laughs> trying to get away from the other player to revive the emergent gameplay of not reviving your yeah. wife <laughs> it tries to like dodge you in the ghost <laughs> then you end up dying and then you both lose so i think it creates these really funny instances that like i haven't had in a game especially in a platform game in a while <laughs> so you found a way to play mario wonder toxically congratulations it's only on the levels where like there's a lot of platforms so you're trying to jump and avoid her and she's like come here i'm like no and then i, then I fall off and then we have to start to level over we you have to actively over. try to be toxic in this game but we have, well, we that was have a laugh with... about it though but that say, to david's point that's because it's the couch co-op now all online that would be a completely different reaction i think than mm-hmm. not on couch co-op when you can both laugh and have fun it's it's different online but no couch co-op is is fantastic but, you know, going back to, like, the online co-op thing, like, yeah, it's the the ghost revives. It's a good thing you bring up. Like, I like that I can drop standees asynchronously and help you, right? Like, it's that a is very, a... it's a very Dark Souls experience, which mm-hmm. I think is cool. Like, I, I've done this a few times now where I revived someone. They revived me. We ended up jumping on the flagpole together. We exchanged, like, the happy face emoji <laughs> and then you never see that person again which is yeah. very dark souls like that's the connection they wanted to make like you have this experience and then it's over and you have that fond memory and i i've had nothing but positive experiences with the the experience they created but no you're you're absolutely right that nintendo has not delivered an online co-op experience in a mario game that's good yet like yeah. they, they they have not done that yet the local co-op in Wonder, though, is awesome. It's fantastic. And fantastic. it supports four players. Uh, it's very fun. So if you want to have a great time, it's a, I, I think this game is going to be a very good party game uh, to just kind of bring out if you have a bunch of people over at the house. Uh, but you can also get competitive. Uh, yeah. You know, So I, I think that's cool. I think the race levels, the, I, I've mentioned it in several categories, I think the Wiggler race levels are awesome and uh, lend to very fun online and offline co-op experiences. Because 
that's the one thing where it does shine is that you can play with friends online in like a race environment for each level uh and that's just kind of cool like speed running is really much is very much in the mario dna but wonder kind of celebrates speed running in a different way and it incorporates that into multiplayer experience which i think is cool uh let's move on to the next nominee if no one else has anything to say other than mario number one uh disney illusion island ozzy you reviewed this would you like to chat about the uh co-op experience I can briefly chat about the co-op experience for Disney Illusion Island. And uh, part of what I really enjoy about it, other than it being, you know, it's local only. It's probably better that way because uh, it's something that you got to experience with either a loved one or this is more actually for parents and for parents with little ones. And not just in terms of a difficulty setting, but like in terms of what they add in terms of co-op features. What I really liked is not everybody you play with is going to be as advanced as you are. And I've come to realize that over the decades that I've been playing games, not everybody's going to be as good at platformers as I am. So when I play with someone, the option to, like, if I hit a higher platform, instead of waiting for, like, the other people to, like, kind of reach where I am, you can lower a rope and they can climb up and then climb the rope up and they can catch up to you. You can help, it can actively help your partners. If you, if they, if you think they're taking too many hits, you can go and you can give them a hug and you both get an extra hit. And I think like little charming additions like that actually make this a really fun co-op experience and actually makes it like an ideal first game to play with, you know, your son or daughter, like your your little kid. And I, I actually really enjoy that aspect of uh, co-op in Disney Illusion Island. So you can hug people with Mickey Mouse in this game? Basically, yes. You can, And you can hug as much as you want. There's no <laughs> limit to it. <laughs> Unlimited hugs. Amazing. Uh, that's awesome. And that's right out of Illusion Island, isn't it? Uh, Illusion Castle, Ozzy? The it's not, it's not Illusion. a spin off of Illusion Castle. We've got over this, Craig. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's it's from one of those Sega Genesis games. You can also use a rope mechanic. They pulled it directly from that older game, which is kind of interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That mechanic, yeah. But this is the first time I think Mickey Mouse has been hugging people in video games. Also, not a violent game. You have to like avoid you, you avoid enemies a lot, so it's kind of it's cool for all ages. You have to, you very have accessible. to avoid and you have to you cannot you cannot t uh, harm enemies at any point. Like there is no killing at all. Like even if they kill you, you just end up like flying back to the nearest mailbox. Which mailboxes are plentiful in in this game, and you can just uh, touch the mailbox and everybody responds, and you keep you just keep going. Nice. Uh, I'm going to keep going here. Our next nominee is Baldur's Gate 3, which you can play, I think, without a mod up to four people in a party. Is that right? Correct. Yep. Donovan, you, I see you nodding. What do you, what do you want to say about this? Boy, Baldur's Gate 3 is the most fun I've had playing a co-op video game in probably years, I think. They have, like, just completely created the feeling of sitting around a table and playing D&D with your friends in video game form. Um, even to the point where like, it's obviously a story-based game, there's a lot of decision-making, but in a lot of games like that, it is to the point where like, maybe the host uh, is the person that sets the tone, like only the person that's leading the lobby can make decisions, but in Baldur's Gate 3, it's like everyone can do it. Um, you can be in a store talking to somebody and your friend can go talk to an NPC, uh, piss them off or make them happy, get a rare item. Uh, and kind of set the tone for what everybody's doing, even in combat, coordinating class abilities and features with all of my allies. Um, just the the way that they keep all of the branching storylines and narratives and inco incorporate that all into co-op without any like real restrictions or drawbacks, I think is a miracle of game development and uh, a lot of fun playing through that game with my friends this year. I just think Larian Studios, and we're going to be talking about them a lot, in a lot of different categories, a lot of different nominees. They, they've been nominated a lot at the Shack News Awards. They deserve mm -hmm. high praise for making the best D&D video game ever. And D&D &D is inherently a co-op experience, so I, I think it's a very worthy nominee for this category, and I am just kind of taken back by how well they have executed on that. Yeah, it's a simple thing to say, but every many video games have tried this, and few have succeeded. So, definitely a mm -hmm. worthy nominee. 
I think TJ, you were about to say something. I like there are already so many interactions that you can do in this game. Like there's so many ways to like bend the rules of the world based on the magic you have, the abilities you have. So when you add a second player with uh, into that equation, those interactions become exponential. Like I've I've mentioned it in a few other deliberations, but. Uh, my spouse and I have been playing the game in local couch co-op, which I love that it just has that in the first place for consoles because that's awesome. Um, but we we uh, we have gone on a sort of Bonnie and Clyde style <laughs> uh, theft ring where if we have items we need, especially with a certain wizard in our party that we sometimes need to procure items for, we will uh, we will go into a store. Sam will talk to them and be all charismatic, and then I will sneak behind them and steal shit, and we'll just walk away. <laughs> awesome. And it's yeah. just, I, I love that those options happen specifically because we have two people that are working on the, with their own abilities, their own skill sets, and their own knowledge of the game to make those things happen. It's just funny because it, it reminds me of hearing people talk about D and D campaigns, but the amount of emergent gameplay that is born, the amount of emergent gameplay stories that are born out of Baldur's Gate three co op sessions, hilarious. Uh, and yeah, I think that speaks to why it's nominated in this category, why it's probably one of the best co op games to ship in recent years. Uh, anyone else want to throw more praise at BG three, or should we move on to the next uh, nominee? I'm moving on. Payday 3 is a game that shipped this year. And uh, when it worked, it was pretty fun to play co-op, I gotta say. Uh, and I know they're working on making it run better. There have been some design decisions that they made that may have made it less of a success than people were hoping. But I still think it's worthy of a co-op nomination, because like I said, when it's working, it's pretty dang fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Donovan, do you want to reminisce about that time we tried to play Payday 3 and end up playing Halo Infinite and stuff? <laughs> when it's working, it's Yeah, great. I mean, like you said, when it's working, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, the Payday formula is just great. Like, the, the heist format that they have, it's mm -hmm. exciting. It's exhilarating from the, the planning stage to act, the actual execution. There are a lot of those kind of unexpected, just emergent gameplay moments where, you know, you turn a corner and there's a security guard that you didn't account for and suddenly everything kind of gets turned on its head. Um, it's one of those games where no matter how hard you plan, it always just kind of goes to shit. Or at least when I plan, it, it goes to yeah. shit. Uh, which is always fun. Um, the level if of you're playing with me, required. If you're playing with me, I guarantee something's going to go to shit. 100%. Yeah. We're not getting out of that mission stealthily, but it'll always be fun. We'll be laughing by yeah. the end of it, no matter what. Um, which... It's exactly what you want from a co-op game, right? It's it's always a good mm -hmm. time when you can play. Every co-op team needs a Leroy Jenkins. Well, they don't really need a Leroy Jenkins, but I will be your Leroy Jenkins. Uh, yeah, no, Payday Three, it's fun. Uh, there's not like the that formula is good. Payday Two, still very good. Uh, so yeah, I hope that they can improve upon some of the things that have upset the community because it's a good game. And I'm sure there's some good people over there that worked on it. Uh, at, at, yeah. Literally at the moment that we're deliberating, uh, they have added, they have just updated the game and they've added uh, Legacy Heist, which is going to be oh, hopefully right. to go a long way towards getting those uh, Payday 2 players back. Well, there you go. Uh, and that's what I mean. Like it's it's Some of these games are going to be ongoing games. Some of these games are going to be up for maybe most improved game next year, right? But... Uh, Payday 3 is definitely worthy of a co best co-op game of the year nomination. But is it the winner of this category? Uh, that's what I was going to say. I, I had a great time when I got to actually play with my friends. You know, that was uh, few and far in between <laughs> with getting it actually functioning properly. It's tough, but... man. Like Getting four people together to play a video game any, you know, in, in our age group is not easy. So then when, yeah. like, when you do invest that time together as a group of friends and then it doesn't work it's super deflating and then you have to play halo infinite for some reason <laughs> Has Which, paid yeah like the hype was real we were we were definitely you know me and my friends are hyped for this game because it's been you know years uh mm -hmm. waiting for the the release and everything else there and man when we got in 
and got it rolling, you know, mastermind and, you know, my friends, the enforcer, we get the, the plan rolling. Feels real, real damn good for the most part. But mm -hmm. then you got all the times when it doesn't actually work. And then you're like, all right, bro, I got like maybe another 20 minutes here before it's time to go, uh, you know, get some food or something. We got to play hero games. <laughs> like that's, that's not yeah. good. Yeah. And that frustration is, yeah, it's, Shaq it's not great. playing Halo Infinite for some reason. <laughs> have, they made, have they made Payday 3 more accessible? Because I my friends played a lot of Payday 2 and they were like, you need to play Payday 2. So I played it and I tried to play the tutorial or whatever the mission is for the tutorial. And it was really difficult to understand what it wanted me to do. So I ended up killing everyone and just kind of wandering around the level empty, not knowing what to do. And that's been, that was my Payday experience. <laughs> I was like, what do I do? Um... I, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I, it's been so long since I've played a tutorial and paid But like, is three, does three make it easier to understand what you're supposed to do in your role? I think like... three has a pretty in depth tutorial, Greg, and it it kind of mm -hmm. holds your hand and tells you here's every aspect of the game. So I, I'm, it's been so long since I played Payday 2, I don't even remember the tutorial on that. Yeah, but... that's what I'm saying. But, but Payday 3 does have some solid, uh, stuff for that that's not like, the problem I have some friends that also you know we're trying to play it for the first time and that I'll wasn't just, the issue that's not the problem greg the the problem is that it requires you to be online even if you want yeah. to just play a single player instance and that's i got beef with that i don't know <laughs> well, who thought that was a good idea considering what the community does so many people do solo runs and everything else but they don't have any access or interaction with people online at all uh yeah i don't know why they thought that that was going to be something that people would want in this that's game. Not, it's not like as big of a problem for a co-op category, but it is a problem with the game that led to a lot of people not even picking it up, which means that there's less people to play co-op with. Yada, yada, yada. Let's vote. What do you say? Let's do it. Steve. I'm going with Mario Wonder. Mario number one, you say. Interesting. Bill. Remnant 2. Ozzy. Uh, I really like what Disney Illusion Island did, but I don't think it's a better co-op game than Mario Wonder, so I'm going to go Mario Wonder. Mario number one. TJ. Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3. Okay. Um, Greg? I'm going to do Remnant 2. Okay. I'm going to wait. Donovan? I'll just get three, no question. David. I've never had a D D experience, and I, I know that Baldur's Gate 3 comes as close to emulating that as, as I've ever heard, but um the Souls fan in me uh, has to go remnant too. Okay. Danny. Yeah, I know this is this one's a bit tough for me because I, I I think that I'm gonna go with Baldur's Gate on this one. But Remnant T was up, also up there. It's a game I actually want to play it, friends, more. Yeah, this is tough. Um, what did Sam vote? Thank you for bringing that up. I <laughs> wanted to just sneak that in there for good call, Bill. relevant reasons. I, I have no know. idea why you would remind me of such a No idea. Has, has summoned Sam. Yeah, let's see. What I see Sam... what you did. I see what you did. What did Sam do? <laughs> Sam voted... Sorry, I lost my place on this. Sam picture. penciled in PD3. Well, that's not going to win. <laughs> Sam penciled. Uh, sorry, so we have BG3 from Donovan. Gray. Can I say that? Can I say that Sam couldn't connect with everyone else here on oh. PD3? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, so we got, just to recap, we have Steve, Mario, Ozzy, Mario. Yep. And then we have Bill, Remnant, TJ, you, you picked BG3 or was it Remnant? Baldur's Gate 3. Okay. I think Baldur's Gate 3 has four, three votes? Four votes. Greg, you voted for Baldur's Gate 3, right? No, I did yeah. Remnant. Remnant. I voted for Baldur's Gate 3. Okay, so there are four votes for Baldur's Gate 3. That is the most... Man. Judge's vote doesn't matter, really? I, I don't think it does, right? There's only two votes for Remnant? 
No, there's three. There's, there's three, three votes. I voted, I voted Remnant. You yeah. voted for... Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I, I should be writing this down, but I don't... Voting is hard. Look, I, I made an app that would keep track of voting for this reason, right? <laughs> I'm going to do it. Well, here's the problem. If I vote for Remnant, Sam's not going to be able to re-vote. I think... Well, I don't know. I, I could be overstepping and saying this, but... Sam just gave Baldur's Gate 3 a 10. I feel like if he That's had true. to revote, he played through the entire game co-op. I would be surprised if he's been playing that game for months, and I don't think he disagrees. Yeah, he probably what did he that. give Remnant? I, mean, I don't know. Did he review yeah, Remnant? He, he Remnant. also loved Remnant. <laughs> he has what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't even think we need to like it. Had like score is irrelevant. Um, yeah. Because if I Sam told me I could I could basically step in for him as long as I was true. So I'm on the honor system. I, I, I can't lie. I think he would go Baldur's Gate. Worth noting. If he had to choose again. between Remnant 2, as much as I would like to flub the numbers for Remnant, yeah. no, I, no. it'd be a lie. It'd be Baldur's Gate. I, on the scale. I'm, I'm more likely to play Remnant 2 with friends than I am Baldur's mm -hmm. Gate 3. Because I, I think Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be fun as a single player too. Uh, yep. But like I said earlier... What Larian has done, making a, a D and D experience in video game form, and making it this good, they deserve high praise for that. So it's unfortunate that it was such a stacked category this year. I think these games all deserve praise. That's why they got nominated. But yeah, Baldur's Gate three is my vote. Baldur's Gate three is the winner of the Shack News Best Co-op Game of the Year twenty twenty three.